Welcome back to Pacific Drive. Before we head into the middle zone through the crack in the wall here, I want to continue exploring the outer zone. Let's go up north. I want to explore these two places. I don't know if I can do that on the same trip, because by the looks of it, I can't go from here to here to there. I think these have to be separate trips. Let's go to this one first, which means we're going to have to stop at either E6 or E5 first, which we've already been to, so I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Finished with E5, which we've been to before, so let's head to E2, the Downs. Never been there before. Everything's in decent condition, um, except me. I forgot to take any medkits, and I got shocked a bunch of times by those shock towers, so my health is like 30-something percent. That's not great. I also don't have a impact hammer, and I can't craft one at the moment. So I hope this isn't too bad. Well, it's daylight. It's nice. Oh, extreme conditions. The Warrens and Violent Voltage. Violent Voltage. The electrical discharges detected in this part of the zone are at a much higher voltage, which means they will arc past car defenses with ease. Okay, so if my car gets electrocuted, I get electrocuted. That doesn't sound too bad. The Warrens. Bunny anomalies run rampant in this part of the zone. Also doesn't sound too bad, so the bunny anomalies are those rolling balls that stick to your car, but I have the, um, uh, the, uh, on F, I have the pulse emitter, whatever the hell it's called, which will make the bunnies pop off. Okay, what have we got? Quite a few dirt roads seem to lead to the tops of mountains. There's a bunch of art of things here. Without an impact hammer, though, how much I can loot those is pretty limited. Well, there's like an art of base here. Let's go check that out and see if I can find the stuff to craft a new impact hammer. God, it's so pretty. It's so warm, like the color is so warm. I suppose I can turn off the wipers, huh? Hey, that's new. Spike bottle. Partial memo, 1964. Captain Neil Douglas filing. Today, when engaged in pursuit of a pair of zone trespassers, three vehicles from B Company were damaged and put out of action by what may have been traps deliberately laid. The trespassers, who crossed from Canada via the Salish Sea, and may be fugitives, are believed to have landed somewhere near Joyce after traveling via small boat. After multiple sightings and extensive tracking, we encountered the trespassers at approximately 1100 hours and begin a vehicular pursuit down several fire roads. Driving a stolen government car, the trespassers evaded capture for some time and were able to prevent further pursuit by leading our team across patches of some kind of semi-organic oil-like spikes. All three cars used in the pursuit suffered destroyed tires and damaged wheels. It is unclear at this time whether these patches had been somehow laid in response to the pursuit or had existed sometime beforehand. The patches are extremely dangerous and utterly unlike anything we have seen before. Recommend requisitioning tracked vehicles from Fort Lewis for further exploration. Okay, so they'll ruin my tires. Makes sense, they're all spiky. I wonder if it would ruin my feet. I don't care to test that when I have no medkits and 33% health. I want to check out this cluster of buildings up here. I think I just follow this dirt road as far as it goes. Yeah, it goes pretty much adjacent to the main road and then suddenly veers into the mountains. So I'm pretty sure those things... Oh, hey, hold on. I'm pretty sure those things, um, glittering boulders, give you a speed up. So I don't think there's any harm in me hitting them. In my car, anyway. I don't know about hitting them, like myself. Oh, 
Okay, you can get pressurized cartridges from these. A whole bunch. Yeah, I think I need lead for some sort of research project or something. Will I get it from these? Is that the best thing to use? I should say the best tool. Recommended tool, scrapper. Yes. Yeah, I need to be stopping at these things and destroying them. Because they indeed drop lead platelets, yeah. Too heavy to be practical, too soft to offer protection, too poisonous to be used without due diligence. Lead's secret power is its impressive ability to shield against radiation. Alright, let's get some speed. Yes, it does exactly what I thought it would. Yeah, those are the things we hit when we were going from the bridge into the, um... What was it called? The thing when we were testing whether, uh, this is a remnant. Oh, hey! More lead. my scrapper. Yeah, I can make another one. Cool. Starting to think I should take a vacuum with me. Because for things like this, sucking all this up would be really nice. I'm also okay with the fact that I don't get 100% though. Like, if I get most of it, it's fine. I don't need to hunt down every little piece, especially if it's not something vital, like just a piece of scrap metal, because that's so common. Yeah, so this is the little cluster of buildings. I think we should take a rather fun off-road route that really tests out my tires to get here. I don't think I need roads. In fact, I'm not even worried about this fence. Get off of me, please. But hold on. Is that different? Is that a normal bunny? Like, I think extreme bunnies were a thing for this zone, if I remember right. But like, is it something new that I have to scan? Oh, it's one of these little mobile research stations. Yeah, that's what they are. That's why there's lead everywhere. It's to protect the researchers from the radiation. Remember, we found a note talking about how sick of setting up these things they are. Because it's all so heavy and impractical by the time they've set it up. Usually the thing that they wanted to research is moved on or something.
This car looks interesting. It's colorful. It's apparently just a normal car, though. What the hell? What just shocked me? Ugh. Let's go. Okay, so we have another cluster of buildings around here and two power sources. Oh. That ah, warning means a storm is incoming. Okay, uh, I'm not going to stay to loot these buildings then. Let's just get as much energy as we can and then go. Please get off. Thank you. I love these off-road tires. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. We're very low on fuel. I think I better fix that. I might not have enough to get to the exit right now. I don't need the whole can in there. Like, there, half fuel. That's fine. Ah. Oh no, don't flip my car. Uh, can I reinstall you? Yeah, I like to have my door on. We hit this road and then take a right. Yep. Follow this to the main road. And then take a left on the main road and then just go straight. Speed up, please. Ah, too fast.
I think I'm gonna have six power or more. 4.9? I mean, that's still pretty good. Huh. I'm marginally impressed. Not bad, newbie. Thanks. I researched lead acid batteries, which we can install in a seat rack, and it'll give us a bigger storage of battery power. I think it holds 35 energy, and our current one holds 50, so it should be a nice upgrade. Also, we have a new fax. It's not an international incident if we don't tell anyone. There are a lot of Canadians in the world. Who's going to miss three? I love that this Canadian thing is not just a one-off. I think we've heard mention of Canadians three times now. Two just in this episode, but there was a third one a while ago. I feel like it was time to refresh the look of our car. So down the center and top of it, I went with a Arda yellow with some Arda decals. And then on the sides, we have animal print decals over dark purple. There's something kind of cool about it. It feels very, I don't know, 80s or 90s or something. I think the animal print especially. But I like it. I also have a couple other things installed. We have the spud light antenna. We have pirate ship emblem. And I haven't actually looked at this myself, but I replaced the stick shift with that springy one. I wonder if we ever get to see it spring. Oh, maybe it does if we drive. Hmm? Doesn't seem like it. I was hoping it would bounce all over the place, but maybe it's for the best if it doesn't. We also have a new fax. When did you last see a bird? Are we sure it's birds making the bird noises? I've seen dozens of birds. We've seen flocks of birds flying away. Let's continue exploring up north. I want to head here. Thankfully, there's a freeway that will take us most of the way. Yeah, it seems like there's these ones all over the map every once in a while. Like there's one here that I haven't quite discovered yet. But wherever you find them, it seems like you can just head straight there and use it as a shortcut to get past a lot of smaller stops. So yeah, head to F1, which we've been to before. Wait, what just happened? It stopped before we actually got there? Is it because I hit the edge of one of those, like... ...bad zones? How does this work? I guess... Hmm. Maybe to go on a freeway, you have to make multiple, like, mini-stops along the way, because this seems quite small. Um, looks like we go underneath a mountain for a little while. There's a one little spot full of buildings, and that's it. I'm not actually sure if I've been here. Numatube. Eat my dust sticker. I think that's a... is that a fuel tanker? No, 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 no. That's like a research vessel. Arda Investigator. Yeah, that should have good stuff. And it does. Wait a second. Can you go inside of these doors? Is 
Doesn't seem like it. Nah. Okay, now we're there. Disruptive discharge. The electrical discharges detected in this part of the zone can damage and disrupt batteries, draining your power reserves. Okay. I am gonna grab this power source and then leave. Hey there, folks. It's Zap, and it's time for the next segment of that double inverter of knowledge feedback. Today we're going to make a couple of things. We're going to be talking about the beautiful and proud Westwood. Now, as many of my listeners know, the incredible crew are absolutely massive. But you may not know, however, that in fact they are the largest tree in the world. Besides being big, they are also as old as the hills themselves. After the first thousand of years, there's a species that goes almost all the way back to the dinosaurs. Now their bark has a very low amount of resin when compared to other similar trees who help make it slightly fire resistant. Here in the zone, I certainly wouldn't mind that advantage for myself. And we don't have any here on the second floor. Given how weird it can get out there, I wouldn't even be fired in the leaf if one shot out of the ground between my feet while I was out on my neck and hike. Anyway, that's all for today. As always, stay safe out there, keep your eyes on the trail, and leave the forest as you found it. Let's head on over. F3 back roads, remote blistering woods, outer zone. Shocking speed. In this part of the zone, dangerous ele electrical discharges tend to also confirm mysterious speed boosts. Okay. Well, the dangerous electrical charges doesn't sound good, but the speed boost sounds nice. Oh, hey. Have we discovered that yet? We discovered something. I think it was, there was a purple one that we hadn't discovered. Right, that's the receiver signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speed, please. Oh, I missed it. How are y'all doing? You always do that, like people are listening. Nobody's listening. I like to put a word. I like to put a word. I like to put a word out there, like, listening. But here's the thing, like, if we're going to play Wonder Wave, we might as well create stuff for people out there, right? If there's anyone out there, I hope they bring back good pizza. If it helps you move it along, sure. There's some weird distortions in the air. I'm wondering if that's a new anomaly or just a normal anomaly. Or not even an anomaly. 
don't know if you can see them. Ah, uh, they just seem to always be there. Like, they're not getting any closer. Ooh! Anomaly encounters number two. I'm nervous saying this because people will say it was whales or dolphins or something. But it isn't like that. This thing is like... Like a kind of submarine. Sleek. Thin. This dull light blue color that blends with the water. It looks metallic, but it bends like a worm. It used to stalk us out there, bumping the hole, over and over. And then one night, I saw it turn west, just under the water, barely disturbing the surface, and it shot away, fast as a torpedo. It's out there somewhere, at sea. Jesus, that's creepy. Oh. Yeah, that, uh, that really does give you a speed boost, huh? It's another Arda trailer up there in the mountains a little bit. Oh, and there's a little research station here, too. Hold on, manual fatigue? What is that? All car components suffer wear and tear, but this is even more pronounced in the zone. Eventually, almost every component is going to need replacing, and sometimes all you can do with a worn-out part is dispose of it. Oh, I didn't know that, so parts just break with use. New facts. Zone Motors and You. Hi, I'm Debbie Reed, and I'm here to help you understand one of the most common and most annoying problems that motorists face. That horrible screeching from under your hood is coming from your belt, which connects to your engine and helps run a bunch of other things under your hood. It's easy to diagnose a squeaky belt by running your engine with the hood up, but be careful not to touch it when it's in motion. Two of the most common causes of a squeaky belt are age and poor belt tension or alignment. Be sure to check the tensioner that your belt runs over and that your belt continues to fit correctly. If it's still squeaking after you check all that, it's probably time for a replacement. Slightly wetting or lubricating the belt in the meantime can temporarily stop the squeaks, but don't put it off for long. Let's go get this power source and loot this tower too. I think I can just head straight there. Got off-road tires after all. Oh my god, Jesus. That was actually helpful, but terrifying. When you're in a freaking forest. Oh, not again. Alright, alright. No, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree. Ah. My health is not too bad, but I don't know about the car. Hood's pretty messed up. Yeah, quite a few things are damaged. Let me do some repairing. Let's head up here to this junction and then take a left and get that. Hell of a storm. Got those tire poppers here. Oh, didn't think I was close enough to hit that. Don't hit the tire. Oh, shit. Well, there goes my f fucking tires. Oh, all right. Uh, 
I'm in a bunch of radiation. I don't think I want to stop here. I'm amazed I can still drive. I think I only have one flat tire. Oh, I've gone past the junction. Well, let me fix my tire, huh? Right, back to what I was trying to do. Numatube. the electricity a wide berth because they seem to be able to zap you from further away than I would expect. Oh, that's not good. Play that, please. Thank you. Technology is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at first. In the decade between 1955 to 1965, Lim is called many things. The promise of the future, the herald of a new age, and never spoken of again. You don't have to dig very deep for the gaps in the story to emerge. The presidential demonstration is the only physical proof we ever see of it. Compared to the Manhattan Project, developed under airtight shroud of secrecy, why was Lynn paraded around in the papers? And if it really was the technological quantum leap to answer all our wildest dreams, why did it blink out of existence? The story of Lynn technology is one hell of a maze, and the key to it is a woman named Dr. Ophelia Turner. Did Ophelia Turner, by all measure a failed physicist as far as her public record goes, truly invent Lynn technology? Or was she held up as a rosy derivator for the Cold War? An atomic Annie to excite the masses during the no-holds-barred race against the Soviet Union? Was she myth, martyr, or monster? A figment of the imagination? True savior? Or a convenient scapegoat? I'm Chiaki Sanohashi, and in this nine-part series, I aim to find out. That's new. Glittering boulder. Wait. Oh no, it's not new. It's actually just literally two different uh, anomalies on top of each other. I thought it was a combination between the two, but not that it was two separate things. Let's get a boost. Ooh, I regret that. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Marsh eggs. 
The organic material within these soft shells displays a remarkable, even alarming ability to regrow itself when harmed. If it could be synthesized with organic or semi-organic compounds, the applications could be remarkable. Yeah, I think there was an upgrade that needed marsh eggs. I think it was some sort of clothing. Can I get rid of these steel sheets? Yeah. Oh, my front windshield is cracked. Once I didn't get shocked. All right. Oh, this should be a good exit near the road, so pretty easy pathway. Let's take a little bit of a shortcut. Oh, that helps. Ah! Whew. Cool. I can't wait for that new engine. This thing really struggles on the uphills. We hit like 40 miles per hour max on uphills. Five point three power. Looks like you're getting the hang of things. Well, once you get that unfortunate driving under control. New facts. This is in Spanish. According to Google Translate, it says, This is neither possible nor conceivable, and yet it is true. Is this a state secret? Should we tell other countries? Let's install another seat rack. And guess what we can put in there? The Auto Parker. Right arm getting tired, rudimentary weight and motion sensors below the driver's seat will automatically engage and disengage the parking brake. Truly, this is the technology of the future. That is seriously going to make a huge difference to my life. There are so many times where I don't bother because I'm just tired of activating the parking brake and then my car just rolls down a hill. This is going to be so nice. Man, that's a hell of a thing. That is quite a contraption. I wonder how it works. So you can still do it yourself. Yeah, it disengages when you get inside. Awesome. Let's install a roof rack. Don't have anything to put in it at the moment, though. Trying out a burnt orange color instead of the purple. Thought the purple was reading just a little bit too dark. Can't explore more up north at the moment because there's high instability here. In fact, the only place we haven't been to that doesn't have high instability is here. 
So let's head to E7 first on the way. I'll bring you back if anything interesting happens. Nothing of note in E7. Let's head on to G9. Remote, blistering woods, outer zone. Junction conditions, touch and go. This part of the zone is full of anomalies known for suddenly accelerating vehicles that they touch. Okay. Oh, there's another broadcast thing over there. Three sources of power and a whole heck of a lot of buildings dotted around everywhere. Oh, and judging by the look of the road, I think it's all dirt. Yeah, nothing paved. Really appreciating my off-road tires right about now. After this, let's head straight ahead, and we'll try to get this broadcast. I love the auto brake already. Should we do it? Should we do it? Should we do it? Let's do it. <laughs> Unwise, but very fun. we can get up this hill. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, I think we have a cork where our radio keeps shutting off. Ah, it's right over there. Okay, we can get around this right, left. Hopefully this isn't too close. No, we're fine. Exclusion zone. But let me rewind a bit. 
In Northwest Washington State, there are 3,600 square miles of vibrant wilderness called the Olympic Peninsula. Bounded by water on three sides, it was a wonderland for outdoorsy types, with snow-capped mountains and salmon-bearing rivers and pristine rainforests. Up until 1955, it was the residence of 100,000 people, including Ophelia Turner. It was her birthplace, her hometown, and, it turns out, ground zero and sacrificial lamb for the promise of new technology. In true fashion, the government never comes out and says that's what led to the creation of the Olympic exclusion zone. But the chain of events were in plain sight. Strange accidents leading to the government's claim of eminent domain and subsequent seizure of the peninsula. The evacuation of 100,000 people and the attempt and abject failure at containing the rumors that spread like wildfire. Because it turns out, even with the government's resources at your disposal, keeping secrets is a tricky business. You can bet there was plenty of talk as a result. Lucky me, because I had plenty of questions. Things seem to have turned a little bit hairy. Shall we get out of here? Oh my god, can you stop? Hold on, what is actually going on? Oh! I didn't realize you were connected. Get off! This song is so good. Freaking love it. What is it called? Holy Mystery featuring Kenny Lee Young. Oh god. Whoo! That worked out. and toes accounted for but don't just count them you gotta check and make sure you didn't bring back any toe hands <laughs> we seem to be getting electrocuted a lot so let's get some protection against electrocution 
I crafted a grounded sweater, giving me 30% electrical resistance. Uh, this is not electricity, but I think this lead apron is a prerequisite for other things. This will give me 20% radiation resistance, and I do encounter radiation pretty often. Yeah, now that now we can do the lead-lined lab coat, which gives me more radiation resistance, but now I need more lead platelets for that. Gave our car quite a big upgrade as well when it comes to electricity resistance. Researched and built insulated parts for pretty much everything. So we have insulated panels, insulated doors, I have an insulated bumper on the front. Oh, right. This is a steel panel itself as well, the hood. I still need to do that one. But yeah, we're going to have much better electricity resistance. It kind of makes the car uglier. It certainly covers all the paint and stuff, but it also looks like it is ready for war. <laughs> it looks a little Mad Maxy. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode there, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, it looks like up north has cleared up a bit, and now two unexplored areas can now be explored.